I didn't do a commentary last week. I was in India on a fact-finding mission around tuberculosis. Tuberculosis is uh, a rampant in India. India is the epicenter of the disease. Nearly three million people carrying tuberculosis in any given year. Uh, I traveled with a colleague. We spent three days in Mumbai, formerly Bombay, four days in New Delhi, a fascinating and intense week. We met with everyone imaginable. We talked to the hospitals, the health clinics, the health centers, the health dispensaries, the municipal officials involved in health. We discussed uh, issues with the deputy ministers of health, with the private sector, with the Clinton Health Access Initiative, with the Gates Foundation, with USAID, with the World Health Organization, with Médecins Sans Frontières, MSF, everyone covering the gamut. And it was a most extraordinary experience, and I'm writing about it at this moment, but I came away with three particular views. First of all, the sheer inundation of numbers. Uh, I won't reveal anything by saying that India has 1 billion, 200 million people, and it's absolutely overwhelming. And when you go to the hospitals, from the earliest hours of the morning, the courtyards of the hospitals are packed with people. A massive horde of people in the waiting areas of the hospital, in the corridors, lining up for the pharmaceuticals. I'm not talking about tens or scores or hundreds. I'm talking about thousands of people. Last Wednesday morning, we were in the pediatric uh, hospital, and, and it was so touching, the oncology ward filled with children struggling with cancer, the neonatal ward, the, the infants struggling with disease, three and four to a bed, uh, such awful overcrowding, and yet the, the doctors and the nurses so committed, so dedicated, it was inspiring, if overwhelming. And then the second thing, which I must admit I didn't understand and didn't know about, is that the great majority of people in India go to the private sector for their health needs. And of course, the quality in the private sector varies hugely. And the effort to have the private sector and the public sector come together so that the public sector priorities set by the government can influence the private sector, that integration is proceeding very slowly and is very difficult and compromises responses to an infectious disease like tuberculosis. And finally, and again I didn't understand this or know of it ahead of time, apparently for the last 20 years or more there's been a terrible underinvestment in health in India. Roughly 1% of the gross domestic product, much below most developing countries. And as a result, health and with it education have been starved of the necessary financial benefits. And curiously enough, Prime Minister Modi now is de has decided to invest in economic growth, hoping that it trickles down to health and education. Well, curiously enough, just this morning, I got my latest edition of The Lancet, the scientific medical journal, across my computer screen. And lo and behold, the editor of The Lancet writes an editorial about Jim Kim, the president of the World Bank, saying that Jim Kim has finally found his calling. And what is that calling? Well, just last week in Seattle, Jim Kim announced a human capital project. That is to say, you invest in human capital the health and education of people if you want to lead to poverty eradication and economic growth, not the other way around. Jim Kim is right. Prime Minister Modi, with respect, is wrong. And the people of India are paying a price. That was last week. I'm Stephen Lewis.